Well, good afternoon, everyone. It's good to see everybody again. And uh, excited to be back uh, getting ready for a game. Um, last week was a good week. We had uh, on an open week, did a lot of stuff with our younger players, uh, worked a little bit of Iowa State as well, uh, but uh, focused a, a decent amount of our, on our young guys uh, and then uh, gave them uh, the weekend off so they could recharge their batteries and, and uh, get themselves as, as healthy as they can get and uh, had a good workout yesterday uh, for about an hour and hour and 20 minutes or so of a practice and we'll get back into our padded stuff today on Tuesday and have kind of a normal week uh, leading up to Saturday we're going to play a really good football team in Iowa State that uh, um, we know well and they know us well uh, so we've got to do a great job of coming up with game plans and, and most importantly being able to execute on both sides of the ball and in special teams so uh, looking forward to a great crowd looking forward to a great evening um, to play football it's going to be a, a great atmosphere Anyone on the roster that hasn't played yet this year that kind of opened your eyes a little bit in the off week? Um, probably Crew Jackson uh, that uh, might be able to provide us some spark somewhere, uh, whether it's on special teams or a little bit on defense. Um, I thought he had a really good week. Um, I thought Tyrone Hall, although he's played, um, started to understand more and more of our system. And I think Tyrone can be a, a guy that can be a factor for us. Uh, those two guys um, kind of stick out for us, one on each side of the ball. Is there a situation that Skyler can get healthier as the year goes on, or is this something he's going to deal with? I think he's going to deal with it. Uh, he's going to have the brace on. I don't know how long, but I know it's going to stay on. But uh, he felt a ton better yesterday. Just, you know, he practiced on, on Tuesday, Wednesday, and a little bit on Thursday of last week. Not a ton of repetitions, but practice some. And uh, I asked him, you know, when we had our meeting yesterday and he said, no, just the weekend off and, and him continuing to do rehabilitation, he's got to always continue to take care of his body. And uh, he said he felt pretty fresh yesterday. I know you always emphasize special teams, but with the tra trajectory of these two teams and the way it's going, does that something you place a little bit more emphasis on? Well, we need to continue to uh, do a good job on special teams. We've had a couple of splash plays the last couple of weeks. We, we need to be consistent on, on our coverage teams as well. Uh, but uh, without a doubt, trying to find a spark in the return game and and then hopefully continue to, I thought Ty punted the ball well uh, last week and and Tayton's continuing to, to kick the ball really well. So it, it has to be a big factor for us. How much has last season's game been just uh, we discussed it uh, a little bit uh, on Thursday before we left for a little bit of a break. Um, but you know, it's a new season, new group of guys. And uh, I know a lot of guys were at that game, but there's a number of guys that, that weren't, whether they weren't on the roster or were injured. So um, try not to put too much into – uh, into what has gone in the past and you better focus on the future. And uh, I know our guys are excited about the opportunity. How much can you take away from what their offense was able to do against defense, considering you're running something different? Now? Well, um, the, the running back's an exceptional player and uh, uh, we let him go early and then uh, had, a, had a difficult time containing him. And then once the running game uh, got going for those guys, then the play action pass worked really well. And, and I think Purdy's a, a tremendous quarterback that uh, uh, sees the field really well and, and is a really smart player that puts the ball in the playmakers' hands. And uh, they have a bunch of them, you know, tight ends and wide receivers uh, that can make plays as well. So you can't say against these guys, boy, you, you just have to stop the run. Uh, you have to be able to control the run, but you you can't neglect what they can do in the passing game. And I'm just wondering, as a coaching staff, <clears throat> do you look back at last season much at all, or is that just a, a, a weird season that took place along the way? You know, we don't look at it right now, just simply because we're we're in the midst of this season. Um, you know, you, it 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 was it was still a season. You still have to count it, uh, but. Um, we're trying not to look back as much as we are to look forward to see how much better we are, uh, not only on the field, but off the field. And, and part of that was out of some of the guys control too. You know, we just didn't have a, a ton of bodies uh, last year and uh, we're focused on this year and continuing to improve. And uh, like we talked uh, at the end of last week, I, I believe our best football is in front of us this year as Skyler gets healthier, as we continue to learn more about ourselves on defense, uh, that uh, I'm excited about the next seven weeks. 
Do you, do you feel like Skyler's at a point where he'll be more comfortable trying to run the ball this, this time? Yeah, around? I believe so. Uh, I think each week he's going to, uh, I don't know how much he will, you know, everything is just a little dictated on how people play the quarterback run. Cause some people can take the quarterback run away and some people can make you run it as a, as a, in, within their defensive scheme. And I think he feels more comfortable. Uh, I know he does. He, he needs to be able to run the ball for us a little bit, probably not as much as we'd ask Will to do it, uh, but it has to be a threat. It can't be, well, we're not going to run some of our quarterback series. We have to be able to do that with him. Jake Rubley was a guy you get a chance to look at a little bit more. Just what, what were your observations of him? He did a really nice job. He's learning. Uh, he's throwing the ball really well. He's feeling more comfortable uh, in the surroundings of our offense. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's he's still a young player that uh, we're fortunate we have some older guys uh, that he can continue to learn from those guys. Another thing mentioned last week, maybe simplifying some things a little bit on defense. Do you feel like you were able to do that during the bye week? Yeah, we talked about that. We did some things in the limited practice time we had with the older guys and then the younger guys. We just worked all of our base stuff. It still comes down to you know what we talked about at length last week of being able to get off blocks and being able to tackle and uh, uh, making sure that we know our correct leverage angles on tackling uh, as well as the ability to just, you know block, destruct, and get off and run to the football. With teams short punting you, how can you take advantage of that situation? With the, with them, what? I'm sorry. Uh, you know, you got to be able to field them for starters. You, you you almost gain a first down if you can field a 32 yard punt or a 35 yard punt because people can bang it 45 and 50 yards. Uh, the operation time that we've seen from snap to kick is, so far in our first five opponents, uh, as well as ourselves doesn't lend itself to have many opportunities to block, uh, block kicks. Everybody's getting so much better at the operation time. You know, Randon's operation time with Ty is so quick right now. A lot of that we're seeing as well. So we're trying to set up some returns uh, against people. We still have to be able to pressure uh, people in, in case there is a bobbled snap or in case the timing is off. But, uh, um, you know, we're continuing to try to win outside. That's the biggest thing we have to do on punt returns is uh, people have really good what we call gunners uh, that run down there and force fair catches. We've got to do a great job against those guys. And what kind of asset is Reggie Stubblefield given his versatility? Uh, a big asset. Uh, he's uh, practiced last week. He's he'll practice this week. Uh, I think the the bye week did him some good. It wasn't just a hand. There were some other things that uh, uh, he was fighting through, um, and uh, he's I think healthier. And he's he's such a smart football player. It gives us another uh, experienced guy out there that can you know, whether it's direct traffic or tell guys based on different things that he sees offensively, what could be coming uh, from a play standpoint. So uh, Reggie's a really versatile guy that's got really good experience. Iowa State, they were ranked earlier in the season. They were ranked as high as um, number seven and two tough losses have dropped them out of the rankings. How much of a factor does it make in going into the matchup of whether they're ranked or not? Not at all. Uh, absolutely none. Um, I think probably Matt would tell you the same thing. You know, I think rankings are – um, you know, something that nobody controls. Um, and uh, uh, I know they're a really good football team and uh, the two losses they they've had, I think they would tell you, they felt like they probably should have won both games. Um, but that's, that's how the parody of college football, it's uh, you get games in the fourth quarter and you got to find ways to win. Um, Landry had a, uh a good game on uh last, sorry last saturday against yep. oklahoma what does he bring to your team as both a player and as a person well he's a great leader for starters he's up for the campbell uh, award the academic heisman and uh he's well deserving of that does everything right off the field in the community in the classroom uh and that rubs off on young players young players can see uh that the hard work you put in uh can be uh, really rewarding on the field as well as off the field and just his health this year uh, is he's healthy and he's able to play the way that I know that Landry expects to play the way I saw a young Landry in 19, 2019 play uh, that he couldn't do in 2020 due to his injuries. He's a bit of a legacy player for this program. Uh, what does, I guess, um, how do you value kind of those kind of legacy families and uh, recruiting and keeping that going? 
Well, it's huge because of he and his, his dad and his brother having great careers here and, and uh, they bleed K state. And you know, we have a, a number of kids like that uh, on our team. We've got a lot of um, dads that have their sons on this, uh, on this football team. And I, I think it means a ton to the families. And um, you know, like, we've said this a lot that we play for the people that have put the purple on before us. And uh, it's cool to have some of those legacies come back and, and have their sons join our program. Um, and we hope we make them proud. They they've built this great facility that we have with the hard work, blood, sweat, and tears that they put into it. Chris, if you removed last year's game from the equation, typically Iowa state Kansas state is one of the closer matchups in this conference. Now you've been in it for two years going to the third. What, what's your take on that? Why do you think these programs always are in these close games? Um, you know, I think both teams are very physical. I think both teams have playmakers. Uh, it, it still comes down to uh, being able to make the plays at the right time. You know, we had an opportunity to answer a score last year and didn't do it. Uh, and then we turned the football over and it got away from us. Uh, the year before, we were able to capitalize on some turnovers uh, when we, we were able to win at home uh, a couple years ago. But uh, it, it, they're tough because you have to be able to run the football against them. And uh, they do a great job of stopping the run. And you have to be able to slow the run down for them against them. And I think they're two teams that know each other really well. And we spend a, an awful lot of time in off season, self scouting them. Uh, they're good enough staff. They probably self scout a little bit of everybody, but uh, I think when teams know each other pretty well uh, and uh, have playmakers that make plays you get for competitive games. Who appreciates the tight end position. Um, what is it about the ones that they have that makes that a difficult matchup? Because they can do everything. They block at the point of attack. Uh, they can flex out and be wide receivers. Um, they can start in the backfield and motion out. They just do so many things with these guys. Uh, and both of the two that I'm, you know, Kohler and, and Allen are the two. I know there's other ones, but those are the two that stick out to me as far as just making such a difference for their football team because they can do so many things. And you can't say, well, if they're in two tight ends, they must both either be on the line of scrimmage or in the backfield. These guys are wide outs as well. And, uh, um, you know, they do a tremendous job of using, utilizing those guys' versatility within their offense. And I know this isn't probably on your front burner right now, but with all the rapidly changing um, dynamics of recruiting right now with, you know, extra eligibility yep. and now you can add transfers and go above 25. How do you just handle that as a head coach right now? How much more planning is involved when you're trying to? We talked about out? it last week, uh, but you still don't know what your roster is. That's what people don't realize is you still have to have your roster scholarship guys at 85. And so um, it just depends on who comes back. It depends on who leaves your program. There's going to be somebody that leaves our program that we don't know about right now. And then, you know, those are the things that and you can't control that uh, on October 12th or 11th or whatever the heck it is. Those are the things that play out, but uh, um, we have a really good recruiting department that uh, just, you know, kind of lays out the plan of where we need uh, help at, um, whether it's young players or uh, somebody via the transfer uh, portal, as well as what happens in December, what happens in April for that matter. And so uh, it, it's just, it's something that's just always evolving. Iowa State obviously had very high expectations coming into the year. They've dropped a couple of games, which probably surprised some. Do, do they seem like the same kind of team to you that they were last year? Yeah, absolutely. Um, because they have experience. They have guys that have played and won a Fiesta Bowl, um, they have a really good coaching staff, uh, and it's, it's hard to win college football games. I think Baylor's a really good football team. I think everybody's seen that now, uh, and Baylor did some really good things against them on both sides of the ball. And uh, Iowa, you know, they're the second-ranked team in the country right now for a reason, and um, that's a tough game for Iowa State right now in that, in that rivalry. And so they've lost two games of, that are against two pretty good teams, just like we've lost – two games against really good teams and it's hard to win college games against really good opponents. And you have to play your best. And, and to do that, you have to be able to prepare Monday through Friday. You can't just show up on Saturday. And so that's what we have to do this week is have a great week of preparation uh, and great re week of game planning and, and have our guys truly understand the game plan so we can execute at a high level. You think back to that game last year, just how dire were the straights personnel wise for you guys that you were, you were doing? It, it was tough, but 
it, it, you know what? I'm glad we played, uh, especially for those kids that aren't with us anymore. If not, they'd have lost a football game. And I looked at a kid like Brock Monty. I'm so glad Brock Monty got to play another football game. And that's, that was our goal is to play as many games as we could. And we played them all. Uh, talk some about the similarities between uh, your defense and Iowa State's was when you were making that change, was that a team that you, you kind of took a look at or patterned you, after? Yeah, you bet. We, we did watch uh, uh, Iowa State and we've watched them a lot anyway. The, there's some similarities, but uh, uh, there's quite a few differences as well, as well as this is their uh, fourth, fifth year in the system. Uh, and, and so they're doing some things a lot differently than we are. Um, but, uh, without question, they, their success in this league, um, there's a number of teams that have had some three down success in this league to try to eliminate, eliminate some of the RPO game. That's the number one reason why people are doing it is to eliminate some of the RPO game. Um, and so you're going to give up some runs. You're going to give up some eight to 10 yard plays. You're trying not to give up the, the 60 yard play. And that's the, one of the reasons um, that we looked at making the change. And I assume that's a reason it, that when Matt brought it into the big 12, they thought, well, you, people are trying to score a bunch and, and get the ball out on the perimeter. You just have more speed on the field. Also, Jones is listed as a, start him strong side what what's he done to put himself there? it's just been consistent um I, I think uh, you know wayne's been a starter here wayne's a good football player and uh they're both gonna play i mean that you whether you have one or the other they're both gonna play both he and henny are gonna um see time there reggie's gonna see time there just based on the personnel uh i i We'll get caught up a whole lot in, in, in starters. I know kids do, and I know it's important, but it's, it's what you do and, and how much you can contribute uh, on Saturdays. But uh, Wayne's a good football player, and, and he's earned an opportunity. Chris, you mentioned uh, believing your best football is ahead of you. Obviously, the end game is getting the win, but maybe what are some of the primary things that you're really looking at that constitute – having your 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 better football ahead of you i think it's pretty obvious that uh, uh when you have a six-year senior quarterback coming back and seeing how he handles and manages a game and has the ability to throw the football all over the field and get multiple people involved uh you're naturally going to be uh, better, uh, especially on offense, as he gets more comfortable again. You know, he missed an, a, a few weeks in there of practice, but as he gets more comfortable with the timing, more comfortable with looks and things he sees, naturally, that's where I believe we're, our best football is in front of us on, on uh, offense, on defense, us continuing uh, to try to do some things creatively with 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 the defense we're running as well as simplifying, but just trying to get guys fresh and healthy so we can get off blocks, run and make plays. Um, you know, Khalid Duke's not coming back and that's a huge, huge uh, loss for us because of uh, what he was able to do within this system. We kind of designed it originally around, around him uh, because of his versatility being a D end as well as a linebacker um, and, and, you don't, a lot of teams don't have two and three Khalid Dukes and, and we're one that doesn't. So now we have to do a good job as coaches of putting our guys in the best position to be successful. Yep. Um, Skyler mentioned uh, during the last game before uh, the fourth <clears throat> down called to Phillip Brooks, the touchdown play that you and Courtney Messingham were asking him which plays he liked. And he said he really liked that one. Um, I'm sure that happens all the time, but how much trust do you have to have in your quarterback to say, Hey, let's put it in your hands. Why don't we let you call this one? A, a lot, but uh, you know, you earn that trust. Uh, and I'm asking him all, an awful lot, uh, an awful lot. What are things you like? Make sure coach Klein knows, make sure mess knows because mess sees it from uh, up, up above the same as Colin, um, but um, Skyler's seeing it from ground level as well as uh, the communication that he's having with the skill kids on offense uh, is, is really high level on the sideline of, you know, Phillip saying, Skyler, you look the other way. I, I can beat him on this route and not I'm open, but 
I, I can beat him back inside. And that happened to us on a fourth down play where Skyler came back to Phillip after a conversation on the sideline. And we beat a kid for a slant against Oklahoma for about a six yard gain on fourth and four. Those are the conversations that you trust guys that have played an awful lot of football and know each other really well that they need to have no problem. And we talk about ownership in the program. They need to have no problem saying to an offensive coach, Hey, I, I like these, I like this call, but on that particular play, um, we had one play called and that's when we called timeout and uh, went back and looked and talked about it and said, Hey, we've practiced this play where we flipped it out to Phillip all week long, potentially on a two point play. Uh, and we were at two or three yard line. It was a perfect time. Coach, talking about Khalid Duke and the unique nature of his game. And earlier you mentioned Crew Jackson, who's a kid whose measurements don't really fit. Where, where do you have him playing? He'd be playing the same position as, as Khalid. You know, he's six foot five or six foot six. I don't know if he's 205 pounds, he'll be 240 pounds here in a couple of years. Uh, tremendous, tremendous athlete. But it's like, Will Howard or Jake Ruby, can you put a freshman out there and play him a full game? Probably not. He's learning our system. He's learning how to be a college student. Um, but the off week gave us a chance to look at guys like him, look at guys like Tyrone Howell, give them more repetitions. And whether that's 10 plays, maybe it's 50 plays, two, three, four weeks down the line, we always have to continue to uh, find guys that can help us. And he's one of those guys. In 2019, you had you found ways to have complimentary carries around three running backs. Yep. How, how close do you feel like you're to that? Well, we need we need to, uh, and even that, you could add the fourth with a quarterback um, with some of the QB run game. But uh, you know, a lot of things have to click. We have to be able to get the ball to multiple running backs. We have to be able to get the ball to receivers on some jet sweeps and stuff as well. Um, but we also have to look and see, okay, what's open? What are they giving us? You, you better be really patient against Iowa State because they're not going to give you a, a huge play very often. They're not going to give you uh, a 50-yard run or a 50-yard pass. You have to be really patient and, and get yourself in third and short and not uh, have a negative play, have a holding, have something where you're in second and 14 or third and 10 because then they really are able to dictate what they want to do. Bronson Massey's availability for Saturday? I would say doubtful. He didn't practice. Uh, yesterday, we'll see what happens today. Um, but right now, I would say doubtful. I think everybody else that played against OU should be able to play. You know, Bebe was back at practice. Reggie was. So I think Bronson's the only one that I, off top of my head, I think is in, in doubt. You got kind of Nate Matlack penciled into some situational positions? Or yeah, uh, Nate is. Spencer Trussell will play quite a bit more. Um, with uh, Bronson uh, potentially out, I, I would say Spencer and, and Felix and, and Nate and, and even Cartez a little bit, getting some more snaps in there. Uh, Tyrone Tolini, we, we're still going to play uh, an awful lot of defensive line. We're just going to have to mix and match a little bit more. Chrissy's done it a, a long time. How do you deal with Mike Rose? What's the, oh, because he means everything to that. Boy, defense. he does. He's a terrific football player and he's the, the long athletic body to the field that you like uh, that can take away a lot of plays with his length, as well as as many snaps as he has, how smart he is. And he can play in the box as well. And that's something that uh, uh, at that position, um, you know, that's similar to what Khalid could do with, with having length and, and well as being a box player. Uh, and so I think he's, one of their unheralded stars on defense that really makes that defense go. They've got a bunch of great complimentary parts because of so many guys returning, but uh, um, he wreaked havoc on us last year and made a number of plays. And so we obviously need to know where he's at and uh, make sure that we account for him. I'd ask one too about Iowa State's personnel with Brees. He seems to be about as patient running now and yet very productive. What, what are the challenges with, with him because of his size? Yeah, uh, trying to keep him corralled and not let him bounce outside because that's when, uh, you know, he can hit it between the tackles, don't get me wrong, and he's a punishing runner. He's a big kid. But uh, what we don't want him to do is have patience and us lose patience on the perimeter, and all of a sudden he bounces it outside because he's 
tough to bring down in the open field with uh, defensive backs. And, and he's proven that in a lot of the big explosive plays that we've seen is him uh, being patient in the hole, maybe not finding something, bouncing outside. We just watched when he had one about 60 or 70 against Oklahoma State last year, just bouncing outside and uh, he can take it the distance. So we, we have to be able to try to keep him pinned in and that's difficult with their scheme. Okay, have a good week, guys.